I'm happy to announce our first ever members only fishing tournament, the Halloween Bash on Tourney X. The tournament is going to go from October 12th until midnight on Halloween. Registration is open now and it ends Monday, October 14th at midnight. You must be a Patreon supporter to enter this competition. For the $20 entry fee for the tournament, I am guaranteeing $100 for the biggest largemouth caught, $100 for the biggest smallmouth caught, $100 for the biggest rock bass, $100 for the biggest sunfish, and I'll be paying out a first place and a second place, and those numbers will be dependent on how many people sign up. Again, the tournament is $20 for Patreon members only, and to be a Patreon member and to help support Fishing the DMV, it's only $6 a month. And for that $6, which is less than a pack of Senkos or Jackhammer Chatterbait, all Patreon supporters will receive 5% off their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle, 10% off their orders to Tiger Crankbaits, 10% off their orders to Catoctin Creek Rods. They'll also gain access to our private Facebook group community, loads of members only content, our monthly photo contest giveaway, and of course, for this month, our Halloween Bash Fishing Tournament. Again, if you would like to join this community and join this really cool fishing tournament, link in the episode description down below. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens. Today, we finish up the NVKBA uh, regular season on the Rappahannock River with the man, the myth, the legend, the smallmouth slayer, the chatterbait champion himself. <laughs> Chun, thank you so much for coming back on. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. We, we talk about earlier about um, you made a post after I think it was a Shenandoah event, like you finally booked one of these things. You got to win. And now you're back here two years in a row. Uh, how like how does this happen where you you do have these gaps in time where you feel like you can't win and then you get out in the water and you can't not win? Yeah, I mean, I'm having, you know, the best year so far. I mean, uh, you know, I had four top fives you know, in, in six events that I competed in. Uh, and um, obviously the two smallmouth events, you know, those are my favorite. Um, and then uh, the Potomac, uh, lower Potomac and the, the wrap. Um, I mean, I, I just, I, a lot of it's luck, you know. I mean, when you look at, you know, like I think the guy who got second place, Alan, I think his, Alan, his name is Alan Hurt. Um, you know, he had a pretty nice bag, but he had one 13-inch fish. And he, he catches a 14-inch fish and he, he beats me. Um, I think Nathan Shales had four fish and his smallest was a 16. Um, and he, he only caught four. He catches the 13 inch. He, he beats me. So I was just fortunate. I think it's just, you know, I'm, I'm you know, I, I go in with the mindset that I want to win. I mean, I'm not competing to just to have fun. I, you know, I'd like to win and, um, that helps, I think, but, um, you know, there's a lot of luck too. And it's kind of like poker. <laughs> you're not wrong i mean i was you know just to talk about that like yeah i had a shit show day and it's just at some point you laugh where it's like it if it's your time it's your time you know if they're coming off that much or because then on the flip side you'll have those times where those fish should have come off but they don't and right. they're the big ones that you have but i do believe in momentum both for positive and negative. And when you start the year out, you know, you had your Potomac River, Shenandoah, Upper Potomac, being able to split it onto your two different waters. When you cracked that win at the Shenandoah event, did it just make it easier to fish the rest of the year? Yeah, well, it, you know, I was like, the, the whole, my whole season has been pretty relaxed because, you know, I, I did well the first three events that I competed in. I missed Anna. Um, the, the, uh, like I said, the Potomac event, uh, the title Potomac event, I placed fifth. Um, I had really two good practice days too. So I was really comfortable with where I was at. Um, yeah. So, so, I mean, it, fishing is just, it's fun. I mean, obviously it's fun for me and I, I'm, you know, when I have the opportunity to compete, that's even more fun. Um, so, you know, I, just like everybody else, I get, you know, jazzed up to, to compete. Um, and, uh, it's my, you know, my comfort zone, I guess, in terms of, you know, outside of work and everything else that I do, it's just, that's, that's what I look forward to doing to, to relax. So, um, it can get stressful too. I mean, I, I was going through some emotions with, with my day and on the wrap. 
Um, but uh, yeah, it's um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how to answer that. I, 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 mm -hmm. you know, I this is my third, I think third or fourth year then BKBA, and I feel the same. Like the first three years too. I, you know, I thought, you know, I, I was, you know, I think I, my best prior to this year was a second place on the Upper Potomac. Uh, but that was like the third year. So, um, you know, I blanked my first year in the, in the upper Potomac. I think it was, I can't believe uh, that that's gotta be, that's, <laughs> it, it, was, well, it, was, <laughs> it was one of those situations where it was a high water event. You know, okay. High. Uh, so it was, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, Mike had to make a call, do we compete? And the river was really high that year. And I think I caught two fish. Um, but, um, yeah, I just, you know, yeah, I don't know how to explain it, but you talk, you talk about the emotions going into the rap. Um, I mean, delving into that a little bit, what was your strategy? Um, were you going to practice? Were you not like, what was your mindset going into this event? Well, I, I practiced, uh, it was on Thursday and, uh, um, I went actually, you know, I launched at um, Hopyard and I actually went up river for practice just to see what was up there. Cause that was only my second time being there. So my first time fishing the Rappahannock ever was last year's event. Uh, I think I placed seventh last year, but it was, it was a pretty, uh, I don't think that the, the fish that came in that year were, were people weren't catching that many fish. I think I caught four and I placed seven. But anyway, um, it was tough this year too though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I went up river and I, there was some wood I, I fished and I actually caught a limit. Um, I got there at seven. I met up with Carrie Timms. Um, I caught a limit at in my, by 10 o'clock. Um, but they weren't, it wasn't a big, it's like maybe a 14 inch average, 13 inch average. I'm, so I, so I was thinking maybe I'll focus on, you know, the wood, just obvious places. Um, there's, there's, there's those sections of grass on the, on the, on the bank, you know, those like green, I don't know what it is, but it's kind of a weird willow ish stuff. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's like, a, you'll see like a, maybe a hundred yards of that. Um, and, uh, I would, it looks great, but I didn't catch a single fish in any of that. So, hmm. so my focus was the target wood. Um, but when I got there on the tournament day, I, I didn't go up river. I decided to go down river. Um, uh, and I went, um, to a section where I, where I remember catching fish last year. Um, and it was a, uh, it was actually a, a sec, it was a, it was a flat, uh, with grass in it. Um, I'm not sure what it, it was either. I'm not sure what kind of grass it was, but, um, pretty healthy grass. And it was about a section of maybe about 400 yards worth of, it was about this five, five to eight feet. Um, I was probably, I couldn't reach the back. So I was not, fishing the bank, but I was about, um, maybe 40 yards off the bank. Um, so I'd make casts toward the bank and then I'd make casts up river. I was going, um, up river. Um, and I lost two fish. So my, before, before we reaching that section, I had two 13 inch fish. Uh, so that's, you know, and this was like at 10 o'clock I had 26 inches. Um, so when I reached that section, I actually lost two keepers, um, mm. back to back. And, um, man, I was just, <laughs> that's in terms of the emotions, you know, I was like, I was like, man, this is, uh, I was, I was pretty pissed at myself. Um, but I was excited that I was in a section where I was getting bites. Um, cause these events, it sucks. Cause when you lose them, it hurts that yeah, much more. You, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I caught, I think I caught like probably 15 fish that were 11 inches, <laughs> nine inches. I mean, a lot of small ones. Um, but then I got in a section where um, uh, I caught a 15 and I think a 16. Um, and I was getting pretty good bites. And these were, these were fish that were probably five to eight feet. And they were in, they were definitely in grass. Um, um, so I'm, I went, I went up the section, I'd motor back down, I'd go up a couple times, and I and I finally like after about two and a half hours, I culled my last thirteen inch fish. Um, so my average, I think I had my biggest was a sixteen seven five, my smallest was a fifteen and a half, I think. Did, um, but they were all in that same range. 
Did you use a GPS or like sonar to find the grass? Were you just using your your bait as the sonar, so to speak? To yeah, find I, I had my I had my my Lawrence. Okay. Yeah. So I mean that I used that, um, and uh, yeah, it was it was probably between ten and twelve o'clock is when the bite was on, and I I was so when I lost those two fish, I was like I knew that the rep has like this bite window where catches on fire then all of a sudden it just stops mm-hmm. it's typical tidal water um so i was like just rapid firing my 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 jackhammer um it i don't think it was out of the water more than three minutes <laughs> in that three hour span and that's crazy because you were above me because I, I launched at hicks and it was about two like 140 to shutdown was when the bike kicked on for us down there oh, so wow. Yeah. It's weird because it was it was dead, and then all of a sudden, everyone it seemed like was catching fish, mm-hmm. um, and that's what makes these these things so hard. I had a uh, Chaz on last night for the Monday Night Live, who's a James River fiend, and we got this talking like the title is so hard because if you don't practice, you could be in the right spot at the wrong time, and you would never freaking know it and fish right past it. Mm-hmm. It's so that's so important to have that knowledge of like, yeah, this place is good. I just need to camp here until stuff gets right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, typically, you know, I would, you know, my, sometimes I, I get, I, I like to move when I, you know, when, you know, I like to move around and, and hit spots. Um, and I had to have, you know, I have to tell myself, you know, don't leave fish to find fish, you know, especially when you lot when I, when I lost those two fish. So I, so I gave it a second chance. Uh, and then I caught fish and then I caught a nice snakehead um, in that same section um, next to a tree. How many casts are you? I, I've watched you fish. I mean, I remember, and then you, I've, I've probably told the story. Like, um, I floated down and I, I ran into you at the Shenandoah, and I almost stopped to watch how you fish because it's it's mesmerizing how how fast you freaking go, dude. I mean, it's just yeah. good God. It's watching a yeah. hummingbird on meth. Just bang, 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 bang. Stop. Three casts. Move. But you're yeah. efficient, and so yeah. is that the same strategy on title as well? Yeah, I was I was doing the same thing on the on the lower Potomac, and I did the same thing on the wrap. Um, if you saw me, you would. I was, you know, zip. You know, I, my, my, I'm not the. My, sometimes I'll, you know, I'll, I'll jerk a little bit, but it's just a steady retrieve, um, and and kind of just like the smallmouth, like on the second or third crank, I'd, I'd get that bite. Um, and um, yeah, I, I was I was pretty tired. I, that, I was that was I was yeah you know, throwing. That bait a lot that that, that three hour period. I I so, can't imagine how many calories you burnt cranking that thing. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> well, I've got got tennis elbow on my left elbow. So, um, yeah, that 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 definitely uh, was part of that. What is it about you? I mean, again, like I think Brian, like Davy Height, and then you are the two people I know that just have this connection spiritually with the chatterbait where you can make it work on the moon how is it just your confidence is that extreme with it yeah i mean it's um my like my early like i think it's the last time i spoke with you my early days with smallmouth were crankbaits i mean predominantly like bill norman crankbait that's all i use and um the what do you call it the countdown you know the uh rapala countdown mm. You know, that there's that little, and that's all I use. And that was my confidence bait back then. And then I got introduced to flukes on a guided trip on the new river. And then I stopped buying crankbaits and I bought, you know, 50 bags of flukes. And that's all I used flukes and tiny torpedoes. That was, that was like my, um, uh, during my, uh, kind of like my group, my learning stage of smallmouth fishing. Um, and then, um, I don't know what I, I think I, I was bored one day and I had a, you know, a, a chatterbait uh, and I tied it on and I caught a, a huge smallmouth. I'm like, wow, that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, but when the chatterbait, if you, you know, I rig it. So, so it looks like a crayfish and it has the same action as a crayfish. And for smallmouth that, I mean, that's just no brainer. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you go any, you know, smallmouth fishery, that's, that's their main forage. And, um, 
So, yeah, I, yeah, it's just like I told you, I, I had <laughs> I had three jackhammers. I had three of my rod. I brought six rods, and three of them had jackhammers on. Um, because if I, you know, if I break break off one, I don't want to spend time retiring to scrap the other rod. Uh, and that's all. I, the other three rods, I, I don't know even why I brought them. <laughs> I, I had a top water, and I had a I think I had a frog on one, and I, I just didn't buy it. And I think I cast it maybe twice, and I said, this is not. Yeah. <laughs> "Oh my god, uh, do, are you just throwing the standard in one half ounce, three eighths? You know, one three ounce, three eighths ounce. That's a, that to me is the perfect size for small mouth and then for large mouth." I'm fishing in, you know, like I said, I'm targeting six to eight feet of water. So I don't think I need anything heavier than that. Three, three eighths is perfect. Or if I want to slow down, it'll, it'll sink and I can mm -hmm. slow down. Because um, it was a, it was a blown out, at least where I was. It was a super high tide. And so it. Yeah, that, that tide was really. Yeah. It was turning. It was when, turning. Yeah. Um, then it, around 10 o'clock, it slowed down. And that's when I found the bite. Um, but there's also, I'm not sure if you, there was a section, maybe, well, the main river channel where I was, was really stained. Mm -hmm. uh, and the section that I was fishing was not as, like, when I was looking at, you know, the, when the sun hit the water, I can see this, Yeah. that there's a section of the river that was, that was a lot more stained. And that's, I wasn't getting any bites in that section. The section I was in. Cleaner. Uh, it was a lot clearer. It was probably about maybe a, maybe two feet of visibility. Um. Um, I could see my bait, you know, but, um, that, that helped too. I think there must be a Creek or something. Cause that's what I went to. I didn't practice at all. So I went to Google earth pro and I went back a couple of years and like, you could see where these extra creeks were. they would pull or dump clean water out. Cause mm -hmm. that's, that's the same thing with the area I found with my buzz bait bite early. Um, yeah, it's, I also found something with eddies too. I, it was almost like fish in small mouth where when that current started to just rip, like I, no matter what weight I could, I couldn't keep the bait down, but then I just started to fish the eddies and I started to get bite again. It's like, so it's like, oh, yeah. this is just like, you know, back home, so to speak, when that current's pushing too hard. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, cause dude, I didn't realize cause the Potomac, it doesn't rip that hard. It doesn't, uh, generally speaking, you don't get those massive push of water left and right. It's very gradual there. It seems like. Yeah, it's gradual more than, but yeah, the, you can really feel it on the rat. Yeah. Or the section that I was in. Yeah. That was like really, really weird. I mean, so, I mean, tidal river smallmouth. I mean, I definitely think you really need to know how to read your seam stuff for smallmouth versus tidal, but they're both river systems. Lakes. Lake Anna twice, Battle of Five Lakes twice. Do you feel like that's a part of your game that what would you want to improve there? What do you think is your kryptonite with that? Just fish in deeper water. I mean, just I mean that's that's my kryptonite. Um, I mean, I, if if I find fish, I can catch them, but it's just I think finding it is hard for me. Um, yeah, I mean, I you know Lake Anna, uh, I've done okay, but not like great. You know, I think last year I I, I caught four fish, and had a, if I caught five, I would have been in the top fifteen or something like that last year. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm going to go to the you know, the classic, but you know, my my expectations are uh, are going to be a little bit lesser than the fishing in my uh, favorite waters. Have you played around with scope at all? Yeah, well, I have an AT. I, I just took it off my my Hobie. So if anybody wants to buy a Hobie, um, I have a pretty good one for sale. Um, I just I just took it off, and I and I got a, a I need I wanted something lighter. So I have a U10 now that I'm gear, I'm, I'm uh, setting up. Um, I haven't figured out how to if I'm going to use the, my my live scope for that yet. But I thought what you were using at, at what I've seen you in is pretty light. Why did you think? Oh, I need even lighter than that. Uh, well, I like um, the, what do you call it the. The RVR is, is an awesome river boat and I can take that. I can take that in the lower Potomac too. Um, but I don't know. I just, I just wanted a second guy. Heck okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but I like the U10 is I like the plat, like it's, you know, it has an extra wide platform. Um, 
And um, I love the seat, you know, the 360 seat. I want one um, so bad. <laughs> yeah. Just the, just the convenience of, you know, reaching behind me and getting my stuff. Um, the Pro Angler, I, I really love too, but it's just, it's just I car top my, my kayaks and it's just, it's just too heavy. You know, it's just getting to be a pain. And um, so, yeah, I'm trying to sell it. I think, guys, we'll put a link to that Facebook uh, Marketplace post here in the episode description as well. So go go try to buy that thing. He will autograph it. It has had a lot of luck. Um, the other thing, too, to think about that is, like, the speed. Because that's the one thing. When you go with the inflatable or the kayaks that you use, you're fast as snot when you put a motor on the back of that thing. Like, you can yeah. cover spots very quickly compared to somebody that's in a Hobie. Yeah. No, definitely. Like my RVR, I mean, with the, with the 1103, I'm cooking pretty good um but uh yeah it, it they are, i love the rvr I, I could i can probably just live with fishing with that anywhere but um i just wanted to try the u10 and see how that was going back to the other two tournaments there because we covered the title potomac we covered of course you up potomac all that stuff so the first battle of five lakes um was the aquan reservoir burke sleeters frederick what lake did you pick for that one uh, the first one I went to the Aquaquan. Oh, yeah, That's, and yeah. I completely fished it wrong. I caught the big fish, so, so I, I cashed on that one. That was pretty cool. Uh, I, I think my it, it was like at one o'clock, and I caught the twenty-inch fish in a spot I wasn't really expecting to catch anything. Um, but I, I know how to fish it now. I, I I did my typical spring fishing, like you know, hit the banks, and I just uh, I got to fish find you know fish in deeper water um that place almost is a trap because it's so big for a, for a kayak tournament compared to a lake frederick or a mooney or any kind of like like that to where you have to get you have to run so much water to get to all the offshore spots because i've i fished the sunday res tournaments before with the with john butters and when you have 30 brush piles marked and you can bounce with a nine horse it makes it easy but for a kayak mm-hmm. that I think it's deceptive how much water and time you have to burn to go between spots offshore yeah. to get your bites. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know much about that place. I mean, to say I, I'm an expert, but, but um, I'm not really fishing there, but I, I just got to, yeah, just change my strategy depending on when we're fishing that. Well, you got um, big fish, so you did something right. Well, I, it was total luck. I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, but that was the only fish I, I, I caught two fish that day. I think the other one was like a 12 inch fish. Um, and then, uh, for the second lake event, I went to Mooney and again, yeah. I don't, that was the second time I fished that place. Um, I think I caught one fish. Um, <laughs> I did yeah, that too. And I put the, I said, screw this. I, and- I couldn't believe it. What you did. That, <laughs> that's so funny. I mean, you, you, are, you definitely have ADHD. I called Mike. It's like, is this legal? And he's like, I mean, yeah, you could try. And it's like, all right, it's like, fine. So I just like, I'm going to go to Nye because I wanted to go to Nye first because I looked at it. It's stained. There's a shallow water bite. And it's like, okay, I don't have forward facing sonar. But everyone kept telling me like, oh, Moody's the best lake ever. It's crazy. But it's like, ah, dude, it, you, you can't fish the bank there. You really can't. Like they're offshore. Yeah, they're offshore. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the post that the guy Bass Hunter that he's like fishing there now, and he's catching these four and five pounders. And, um, but yeah, I mean, there are fish in there. So, oh, there are. I think the guy that won it won it out of there. Which I mean, tip of your cap, but with the five lake thing, it's like picking the lake. That's why I picked Sleeters the first go around because there's a lot of grass and they're shallow, so it's like mm-hmm. you don't need scope. Um, I can't believe Burke Lake did so well. That was a random. I thought that place was dead. Yeah, I was, I was surprised too. Yeah. With this, the guy, what second place got fished out of Burke? Yeah, second place. Yeah, which that was surprising. I I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know that place. I haven't fished Burke since I was a kid. Honestly, like it's been a long time since I fished Burke Lake because I always just thought it was dead. But that's yeah. apparently not right. Yeah, I, I fished there when I was when I was in high school. That's nineteen eighties, and um, uh. Even then it was crowded, but it, I can't imagine. Like, it must have been just packed with people because it was a Saturday, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All the pleasure boaters. I mean, that's pretty impressive to catch to catch fish on a, on a day like that. Yeah. 
But maybe, I mean, you know, you know, tip of the cap to him there because he probably figured something out. Like, that's something where I wish I want to figure out the res because I know the res has got bigger fish and I need to figure out Mooney. But honestly, after piddling around Frederick, I think all those lakes can win. It's just you got to pick a lake because Wade got second place and he was fishing Abel. <clears throat> I had him on the show. So, like, all those lakes can basically win. It's just picking, I think, the lake that fits your style more, which is definitely yeah. I failed there. <laughs> mm-hmm. So what time did you leave, Mooney? <laughs> I left at 1030 and I got there at 12 ish, 1230, unpacked and, everything. Oh, wow. I, I literally <laughs> I threw a rope over my back and I drug the kayak from the boat ramp on Mooney all the way to the truck, not even to get the truck, threw everything in the back of the vehicle and strapped it down, hope to God. And I just I hauled ass. Um get to Mooney or get to Nye. And there's no boat ramp there. It's a bog because there's no boat ramp. And then I just start driving around aimlessly hitting the bank. And there's these bubbles. Like, it's the aerator system. And I saw everybody out in the middle, and I thought they were scoping. Okay? So, Ooh. I'm a, a clearly, I'm not observant at all, because they're doing the thing. I, I buzz the whole lake and catch some shorts. And then with an hour left, I'm like, fine, I'm going to fish the bubbles. The amount of shad that were just in these aerator systems was insane. Mm-hmm. And people were just holding a dumbass fluke in the bubbles. And every 10 minutes, everyone would catch one. Wow. And, then, and then all of a sudden, I catch two keepers and the time runs out. And I stayed another hour after and I ended up catching like six other keepers, just just holding a stupid fluke over the aerator system. And then every now and then a school bass would come through and blow up all the shad. Oh, wow. But um, it, it's a lily pads. Well, it, it's just weird because Mooney is deep and clear and then nye has this weird like florida stain to the water and there's lily pads and stuff it's just but it's in 10 minutes of each other just yeah, weird. yeah 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 i i fished nye one of the years and uh i think it was maybe three years ago and i i fished abel with with uh greg oaks on a practice day just fishing there that's a, that's a pretty cool place too i gotta try um, i gotta try abel i gotta try abel yeah Hunting Run apparently has some big ones in it too. A thirty pound bag came out of there this spring. Like all those lakes, dude, they got big ones in it. They yeah, really I, I caught a five and a half pounder at a Hunting Run, um, two years ago in a practice. But I, I haven't done well in terms of tournaments. I've, I, I fished there twice, and I think I, I, I never caught a limit. But yeah, some of the guys know where to go, and some of the guys, you know, were catching pretty big ones there. Switching to the smallmouth thing. It, do you think there is a seven to eight pound smallmouth in the upper Potomac? Because I don't think it's deep enough for, I would have thought that, but after the one I caught and how much bait I've seen in the upper Potomac right now, the next five years, we could probably see one in pre-spawn that maybe pushes six to seven. I mean, I I don't know. Like it, dude, the place is so healthy right now. I know. Yeah, I agree. We hit it at a bad time, but the amount of bait in the river right now is insane. Fall is in the air and it's officially spooky season. To celebrate, I am giving away a $100 Visa gift card. All you gotta do is submit your favorite photo or video of a day at the pumpkin patch, corn maze, your favorite hiking adventure, your favorite fish catch, or anything fall outdoor related and submit it to the Upol app contest. Link below to the Upol app, submit your favorite photo or video, have a chance to win a $100 Visa gift card. Good luck. You know, I caught two citations this year, which was uh, the first for me. I never caught a citation before this year, and I caught two this year. And I know a lot of friends who who miss some big fish. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think a six pounder it would be. Um, uh, but your fish was a monster. That one you caught was. It's what, not real. Twenty one and a half was it? Yeah, it was almost twenty two inches. Oh, that that's a monster, and um, so that's summertime. So yeah, yeah. I, I I don't know. Like it doesn't get pressured. They stocked it for the last five years. Maryland did. So mm-hmm. I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, this year was was an impressive year. I I don't yeah I don't know what the fish are getting bigger. I because I, I was, you know, the previous five six years I was catching eighteen inch. That was the biggest ones I was catching, and they're getting bigger apparently. So, um. But yeah, I, I don't think it's going to be ever like the Susquehanna. I mean, the Susquehanna. When I went to the uh, the uh, Hobie event or the Bassmaster event, um, 
you know, those, the, the winners, you know, the, you know, two, five day, you know, five day limit average was 20 inches. It's stupid. 20 and a half inches. It's, it's crazy. Um, it's also so big. Like that was yeah. going up there this year. Like you can fish left to right. You don't even have to go up river, honestly, because the thing is mm-hmm. so damn wide and there's just so many more fish compared to what we like i mean there's some sections of the upper potomac that kind of resemble now i look at like the susky um where it's super wide but besides that like yeah we just don't have the same water there but yeah yeah the thing that i saw a similarity to again between the susquehanna and the upper potomac is the amount of forage in there right now um at least where i was on the upper potomac it was like the water was vibrating there was so much bait and that's good because that means we could get more 20 inches in the next couple of years we keep having that kind of bait in there because the shenandoah doesn't have that kind of bait right now you back yep i'm back (laughs) hit that timestamp there but yeah, no, a hundred percent to that. Um, with the, um, with the smallmouth club, what is your next meeting and what's going on with that? I had you guys on in the springtime, uh, which was a fantastic time. Is the club still going strong? Like w- what's next for them? No, the, the, it's a, they're, they're still meeting casually at the Vienna Inn. Um, it's usually the last Wednesday of the month. So I think they're actually meeting uh, the 25th of this month at the Vienna Inn around 7 o'clock. And it's just tomorrow. Like maybe, maybe Is it tomorrow? Yeah, it is tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I can't go to work, but they're probably like 10, 10 to 15 guys who are just, you know, eating hot dogs and talking about fishing. Um, anybody can go, but it's not, it's not a formal meeting. Mm. Uh, you should take it over. In my free time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I would like to actually fish more now and uh, talk less. Um, I, I mean, I take it over. Yeah, I know, right? Um, I mean, I, could, I definitely want to help out and keep that going because it's weird to see that thing. Like, I don't want it to see it die. I want to see it keep going. Um, it's so important, I think, for the area to have that continue. Yeah, it just, you know, the group got older and, um, you know, they didn't really, you know, press, you know, membership, you know, like they should have, I think, but, mm-hmm. um, but, but this, I mean, k- kayak fishing is like, that's the thing now, I think it is, you know, that's, that's, you know, I don't think people have time to go to a meeting rather fish. And yeah, I, mean, I think kayak fishing is definitely, especially with like the Potomac river and Susky, where you have those weird, like weigh in rules and stuff. Um, I think, uh, like from White's Ferry down, you can't bring fish, put things in a live well. So it just, it suits kayak fishing a hundred percent. Yeah. Are you, go ahead. No, what are you saying? Uh, Are you making, going to the classic? I, well, I don't know if I made it and I got to check to see when it is. Cause, uh, I mean, I thought you were in the, weren't you in the top 10 or I was, but I sucked the last two events, dude. I sucked. Um, Um, yeah, I, as you can tell from the video I posted, <laughs> I did not, I had, I had a limit. They just didn't want to stay on the hook or in the boat. So, oh my God, if I had an aneurysm, it would have been that day. I have never had that bad of luck putting things in the boat. It was cartoonish. It, it's this stupid, but again, it's not stupid, but like putting it on the measuring board and having it flop out is annoying when you're in a boat that, you don't do that on a boat, but I don't know yeah. why I'm having an issue with that. And then I guess it hurts more because that's coupled with the upper Potomac tournament where I, I lost because it was stupid. Like I forgot the mouth thing, but these are lessons that I'm learning from yeah. being a bass boat guy to this. It's there is so much detail that people don't understand unless you go from a bass boat to a kayak on are you is your trolling motor engaged do you have a fast enough reel because you're moving more you you, you can't yeah. take steps back right you have to have heavier equipment like it's yeah weird. i mean you're sitting you're sitting down like this and you're you know yeah it's, there's so many things you got to figure out and you're not standing up and you don't have the leverage that you do on a regular boat exactly you're right you're completely right and, um and i think people don't appreciate that unless like it's such a it, again like it's such a micro detail but then it's also like how once you get the fish in the boat it's over but in a kayak 
No, you got half the battle. It, it's okay. Oh, how do you keep this stupid thing in the damn kayak? And yeah. it, you get lost in the moment of, okay, now set the stuff up, get your net, you know, strap the damn thing down, taser it. And mm. I got to get way, way better with that. But again, this is what makes the greats. You know, you and so many other people were like, you, you don't, you probably have those errors, but they're not habitual every single time. You you lock that yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, like it, it, kayak fishing, I think you have to have a system. Mm -hmm. You have to know, like, w you know, where your net, you have to know where your net is, where your board is, and have, it's a, it's like golf. You know, yeah. you, you, before a pre-shot routine, when you catch a fish, you can't be like, oh, where's my, where's my board? Where's my net? Uh, what am I, why is all this, you know, I, so once you start, um, you know, getting more experience, mm -hmm. you start learning that that those things are important too. Like how 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 everything's set up in your on your boat. Yeah, you can't have tackle boxes littered all over the space because that that takes time away from you getting the board set up and uh, you know making sure that you have your identifier. Um, so it's it's definitely a, a I think having um, what you, organizational skills is important. Mm -hmm. Um, that's one of the things that, I, you know, I kind of pride myself is I, I have a routine that I do, uh, even in, in the morning of, of getting my, my car, my kayak stuff set up. Um, and the way my deck is set up, you know, when I have a fish, I don't, I'm not wasting time, um, you know, getting a tackle box that shouldn't be on the floor there. You know, I, I put that back in my, in my crate, so it's not in my way. Um, but yeah, it's definitely having a system is important. And the devil in the detail, like things you wouldn't think about, like I, I learned and people have told me before off the water is like un uncode your phone, have the camera ready before you put the fish on the board. Don't just put the fish on the board, then go pull your phone out and then mess with it to get the camera open because then it could flop out. Like right. unless you've lost a thousand fish like I have or someone told you, you never would think like, oh, that's important because the time it's just laying there while you're screwing around getting your phone ready disaster could happen and but it's right. such a little thing but it could cause so much heartache well i i found this tool on 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 amazon it's it's a it's a phone holder it's a, like a little necklace that i have it's a magnetic thing hmm. it was awesome i i used it for the first time and it my phone is it's still i still have my uh my rogue you know my whatever the, the tether for the phone but I put this magnet thing in it, so my phone is hanging in front of me uh, with this neck. Um, I'll show it next time, but um, that was awesome. So I had both my hands were free while my phone is in front of me, uh, getting the fish ready, and I just push the button. I just sit over it. The phone is sitting the perfect one to push the button. Holy crap, that's next level. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, that was, but think about it. You know, all yeah. the times that you know, your hands are wet and, you know, you got to have, you got to hold the phone and then you got to, you know, get the fish in and you're, you're trying to, you know, uh, having that, having your other hand semi free, uh, made it a lot easier. Um, this device is awesome. Uh, if you look at, it's a magnetic, like a collar. And I think it's for people who do, uh, like, like, you know, YouTube vlogs and they want to keep the phone in front of their face. Hmm. Um, but it, it was perfect tool for, you know, managing my, my fish catches. I'm going to have to look at that. Um, yeah. Even like the fish will flop from its head. Like just, and I know this is like, what are you talking about, Tom? So having the board positioned differently because you know, like the angle they're going to try to flop out of it. Just, I never, I, I don't know. Like until this year, I didn't think about that as much angling the board. I think you're the one that told me that, yeah. uh, which was before the tournament, but still um, like keeping the board head down like that. Like it's duh, it makes sense. But, it's it's crazy like the details in kayak fishing you don't think about that to keep the mouth shut um well it's it's funny because you, you you still pe there are people who still put their board on their lap and they they measure their fish on i mean that's you're asking for trouble i mean it, that fish just flops once it's it's 90 percent going to go back in the water mm. um i've lost i know i've lost two fish um uh so i i think i told you i measure the fish i think people take it literally that the fish has to face left you can still have the board vertically on your on your deck of your kayak, and so I lay my board vertically, and I can hold my holding the phone. Can you see my phone this way? To me, is a lot harder than holding it 
it's so much natural to hold it this way. So with the vertical, you know, my the board vertically held up, it's easy for me to take the picture this way. I know you can do it this way, but it's just it's just more Yeah. I don't, it's just not natural for me. So um yeah, you know, my fish my the boards on my I have my foot, you know, planted on one one edge of my kayak. So if it if a fish does jump, it's gonna hit my leg. Well, and that's another thing too that's smart is like yeah. like almost straddling the fish and getting it down there so you can jump on like a hand grenade. Um yeah. And again, like I, I would have called you stupid for that a year ago, but now it's like, oh, that makes sense. Like all these little things will add up to the day, whether it's it, we talk about sharp hooks and line and stuff, not like this part of the game when you get on there or having your net ready. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that would be nice sometimes, too, because um, I remember when I caught that 22 incher, I still have my uh, my my propeller uh, system, the hooking in there and the net was caught in it. So oh, while I was dealing with that 22 inch smallmouth, like I couldn't get the net and I, this is where like, there's an act of higher power because he didn't come off while I untangled the net to get him in there. But mm. that's a mistake on my part. Why is that stuff in there to where I can't yeah. access the net quickly? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those little details make, make a big difference. Do you even use a net with your chatterbait or you just boat flip them? Well, <laughs> I, I just talked about being a, a, an efficient, uh, you know, having good uh, organizational skills. I left my net in my car. <laughs> it was covered with, cause I have that, you know, I have a big SUV and I got, and uh, so I'm halfway down to my spot. I'm like, Oh God, I forgot my net. And uh, it was actually kind of, I don't know. Um, so I, I, so I was more patient. I had to be, when you don't have a net, you're definitely like more freaking out about being, you know, making sure the fish is hooked. So I was a little more patient with the fish um but yeah I, I once i got him close enough i was actually boat flipping my fish uh which i don't know, normally do um but um yeah i was fortunate that and the two fish that i lost it wasn't because of a net it was you know they they jumped and they spit the hook was that a but big issue yeah, spitting the hook yeah like do you feel like their mouths were hard or something i mean again like i i know i had a shit day but it's like I don't know what was going on. I just felt like the the mouths on the fish were hard or something, or like it was just weird to get a good hook in them. Yeah, I don't know. The, the two fish. I mean, I, it was frustrating because I, I yeah, I thought I had, I thought I had pretty two good hook sets on them, and yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, and they weren't they weren't huge fish. I mean, they, they would they, at the time they would have they would have measured, mm -hmm. um, but it was back to back that I lost those two fish, and then um, then after that. I hooked everything that I could that I, with that bit. I didn't lose a single fish. And I, and I, I think the fish that I caught were bigger. So, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just, yeah, I don't know why, you know, I could have been moving in a weird way. Like you said, my, my motor is always running, like when I'm fishing. So, How do you do that and not? Uh... Uh, yeah, I have it at a, it, it's not running fast. I mean, it's, it's yeah. at a pace where I feel like it's, it's, you know, I'm, I could, I'm covering water. Um, and yeah, uh, it was, uh, dude, you have a system down to a science. Uh, it's insane. People try to imitate you, but they'll never be you. Cause that's for sure. Cause, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing anything special. It's just, you know, like I, it's just, it's this, you know, medium heavy 15 to 20 pound braid. I, I do straight braid, um, three eighths ounce, uh, jackhammer with, a trailer, either a Kitek or a, my, my favorite Yamamoto is a double tail, double tail, uh, grub. And, um, yeah, it's just, just, just a steady retrieve. Mm. John, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Again, you've won twice this year, a couple of top fives. I mean, and a couple of big fish awards probably to throw in there. Um, is there anything we can promote for you? Uh, where can people get the kayak, your legendary kayak that's for sale? I have a 2020 Pro Angler 12. Um, it's set up for foot steering and it has a torpedo mount on it, a bunch of accessories that you can put mounts on. Um, I took the, when I first advertised it, I had like my AT1 on it, my, my live scope and uh, a, uh, trans, a Lorentz transducer, but I took all that out to reduce the price. So it's down to $2,900. It includes a cover, scupper cart, um, 
a brand new cover for the a Hobie cover. Uh, what else does it have? Um, yeah, it's it's in good condition. Um, uh, 2020, yeah, 2900 bucks. Guys, I will have that listed down below. Go check it out. Uh, kayak from a champion. It's a great deal. Right now, these things retail for like six grand brand new. So this thing will be ready to go for you to fish. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out in the algorithm. Also, Patreon supporters, if you know, I finally got that Wiley X tournament thing going. We are going to have a Patreon members only tournament from like mid-October to the end of October. So go check out patreon.com to get more information about that. And we will see you next time at Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.